I want you to try this points in the real world page on your own. Um, and then when you're ready, play the video because this is going to develop our concept of what slope is. And slope is a very important thing in a linear equation. So pause the video now. I've plotted the points and I said that in order to get from point A to point B, you have to go up three. I also called it north like they did in the question and then to the right or east four. And then this is the most important thing when you're trying to find the slope of a line. Will Jackie get lost because she confused the directions? Explain why or why not. So Jackie went, I'm going to scroll the picture down a little. Here's what you told Jackie to do. I'm going to put that in pink. And here's what Jackie did. First she went east, then she went north. Whereas you told Jackie to go north and then east. So will Jackie get co get confused? Well, she is confused. Will she get lost? And the answer is no. So I said no, she won't get lost because she ended up in the same spot. She just went in the reverse order. And uh, let's look at how that introduces our concept of slope. How to calculate slope using a graph. In the read along with me. In the math world, whenever we determine how to get from one point to another, we are calculating slope. The, the easiest way to calculate slope is to look at the graph. Count how many units you move up or down. Count how many units you move left or right. The slope is always a fraction, and the numerator is the up-down value, and the denominator is the left-right value. So the things that I underlined are the important things that we need for slope. And slope describes the steepness of a line. So I'm going to use a parallel idea for those of you that went on survival last year. When you got off the bus, that very first hill up to camp, that, you know, with your very first day, you thought that was pretty steep. Then when you went up the notch later on, that was much steeper. And so the slope of the notch is much larger than the slope of that road that you walked up to get to base camp. Slope is equal to rise over run. And we use the letter M to represent slope. There is this thing called the slope formula. Here it is. It goes Y2. So there's a little number two next to the Y, not a regular size two, a little tiny one minus y1, a little 1, divided by x2 minus x1. And that makes you look at this picture over here. What that formula is telling you is that there are going to be two y values that you have to subtract, and then there are going to be two x values that you have to subtract. And here they are. You see here are the two x and y values. There's 1x and 1y, and there's 2x and 2y. So you would end up subtracting these. So we'll use both rise and run. We'll be counting boxes, and we're also going to use the slope formula. One more thing before we get to actually calculating. When you have a line that goes in this direction, like from left to right, you go up the line, it's positive. When you go down the line, it's negative. I sometimes visualize myself skiing on this. See, there are my skis and my hat, and i got to put a scarf on. So I've got all those things, and I'm skiing up the hill, whereas here I would be skiing down the hill, my hat and my scarf. So if I'm skiing up the hill, whatever the number is, it's going to be positive, and if I'm skiing down the hill, whatever number it is, it's going to be a negative. So let's see how to use slope. They've already calculated the rise and the run for us, and they've said that um, they have to go six across, six to the right, and five up. Now, if you think about the Jackie example, we could have gone first five up and then six to the right. It doesn't matter whether you go horizontal first or vertical first, but when you write the slope, it's always the vertical on top. So... The slope is rise of 5 and a run of 6, and that's it. Slope is 5 over 6. Now, you should also look back up here 
And remember that our slope answer should be positive because the line is going this direction. I mean, I don't know why anyone would ever ski up a hill. It's just bizarre. Um, but it helps me remember. It's quirky. Um, but so we know our answer should be a positive answer. All right, let's check out letter B. Oh, and we also have to say whether the slope was positive or negative, and in this case, it was positive. Okay, let's check out letter B. If you want to pause the video, try it on your own. Go for it. <clears throat> and again, I'm going to remind you, just like in Jackie's example, they went um, to the right and then down, but you also could have gone down and to the right. Either way, you'll still end up with a slope of um, negative 3 over 2. Now, since they've done it for us, we can see that our answer is negative, but you can also look at the line and say the line is going in this direction, it's going down from left to right, and that's just like the negative um, example. So let's write negative. And you never want to make your slopes a decimal. Don't ever make your slopes a decimal. Sometimes people will write it as a decimal, like they'll write negative 1.5, but that's very, very rare. When you're graphing, which is really what we concentrate on in eighth grade, you're going to want a fraction. So let's practice with um, these horizontal and vertical lines. So they don't have the arrows for us, so we need to figure out what the rise and the run are. So it doesn't matter what point you start with. I'm going to start here and finish here, but it really doesn't matter. So in order to go from this point to the other point, how many points do I have to go up? None, right, because I'm already on the level. All I have to go is to the right, 7. So going to the right is positive. Right and up are positive directions. And left and down are negative directions. So since I went to the right 7 and rise was 0, I guess I should put that in my picture. My rise was 0 and my run was 7. So rise is 0 over run, which is 7. So you can leave it as the fraction 0 over 7, but most people will just write it as 0. Horizontal lines always have a 0 slope, so you might want to keep that in mind. Let's look at the next one. Um, I'll start at the bottom and finish at the top, and again, it doesn't matter. So i uh, start here. So I have to rise 4, and since I'm going up, it's positive. And I'm already at the point, so I don't need to run at all. That's 0. So my rise is 4. My run is 0. Now, if you don't believe me, get a calculator. 4 divided by 0 in your calculator will give you an error. This is not 0. It's actually this thing called undefined, meaning that there is no number that you will get 4 divided by 0. There's no possible way to do 4 divided by 0. Some people also write no slope because you can't divide by 0. So you can write either one of these. You don't have to write both. Vertical lines will always have an undefined or no slope answer. So you can keep that in mind as well. Example four. The points in the table lie on a line. How can you find the slope of the line from the table? What is the slope? This is the kind of example where since we're given coordinate points, we want to use that slope formula, which I told you earlier in the lesson, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And you say to me, Miss Lean, nothing is labeled x1 or x2 or y1 or y2. And that's because you can pick any pairs you want. So I, you pick any two random pairs you want. Let's just pick, I don't know, this one and this one. And then you pay attention to which one is the x and which one is the y. So this is um, 4, an x value, as well as 7. 
So let's call this x1, and this will be x2. And the reason that they're x1 and x2 is because this row is the x value. Then we go here, and we label 6, y1, and 4 is y2. And the numbers have to match. So if this is x1, this has to be y1. If this is y2, this has to be x2. The numbers have to match. Um, and the letters, X or Y, have to match the value that they are associated with. And now it's just like a general formula. You plug in what you know. So now you have everything labeled, and Y2 is 4 minus 6 over 7 minus 4. And you could have called this X1 and Y1 and this X2 and Y2. It didn't matter. But anyway, so 4 minus 6 is negative 2. And 7 minus 4 is 3. So there we go. The slope is negative 2 over 3. Now, I didn't use this grid because I didn't need to. I found the slope. I used the table um, and the formula to find the slope, which was negative 2 thirds. If you wanted to, if you forgot the slope formula or it wasn't written down somewhere or you just wanted to graph anyway, you could have plotted these points on the grid and counted boxes like we've been doing, um, but this grid was actually not necessary for us. Last thing I want to point out, this might be something you want to highlight and pay attention to, these are the four different types of slopes that you can have, and it tells you how you'll know what kind of slope it is. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.